Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, this is the world away and today I'm going to do the next six stages, so that's stages 33 to 38 of the Agora Models release of Build the RMS Titanic. Now, so that means we're on pack seven now. And remember, these are available for you folks over in America and Canada. It's not available in every territory. So just go to agoramodels.com and I have put a link down there. If it's not on your homepage, then it means that it's not available in your territory. But this is available in the USA and Canada. And if you remember last time, we did an absolute enormous amount of detail on the engine. It's going to be pretty much the same today. We're going to be putting a lot of pipes in. So I have got my little glue stick here ready to go but we are going to be actually able to test all of these engines today make sure they all go round and put the motor in them which is what we're going to be doing in stage 38 so viewing time for this is probably going to be about 20 minutes 25 minutes filming time probably going to be a few hours so we'll have to see how that goes but i want to get cracking on this so without further ado that's exactly what i'm going to do let's get cracking So here's the stage 33 magazine here. I'm just gonna give you a quick flick through that. You do get the magazines with this one. So every stage has its own magazine, as you can see. We are putting some more details on the engine here, which is actually the other engine that we're working on now. So by the end of it, it's gonna look just like that. Lots to do in this one. So this is the engines that we're gonna be working on now. And these are the ones that we're gonna be adding lots of detail to. Just put that to one side open up the box and if you want to know what box is what you've got a number just here it's the last two digits of that number so as you can see this is box 33. And I have got an old tray here which I'm going to use to hold the glue so I'll just get some of that on there perfect always good to dry fit parts first but this is the first part we're going to be going in and that's just going to go into the two holes that we've just got down here there's actually plenty of holes so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this in where it goes and show you where it goes and then I'll be gluing this in. So it's gonna be fitting in just like that. And you can see the other holes around it. So let's get this uh, detail glued in first. Now I do find it best to actually show you some of these details actually on the tweezers. This is the next detail going in. This has got a D-shaped uh, little shape at the bottom. So that's going just behind it onto this section here. Put some glue in there. And again, this can only go in one way. Perfect, that's in. Now, if you remember when we did the other engine, we had all of these walkways to put in. We're gonna be doing exactly the same thing now. So I'm just gonna get one out just to show you what they look like. They do have some little tabs on this side and those tabs are gonna go into the indents that you've got on each side. So it sort of dictates what way round they go. And when we put them in, we do want to make sure that they're at 90 degrees. We don't want them tilting inwards like that. We don't want them tilting outwards. We want them just like that there. So what I'm going to do, just like last time, I'm going to glue all of these into position. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got eight of these. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, each side of these pillars. And there you go. When they're all in, they should look just like that. I'm going to put that to one side because it's time for some tiny parts now. And these are the parts I'm looking at. I'm gonna be attaching the end, which looks like this, onto this section here. Probably best I put this on and show you what this looks like. There is basically a D-shaped pattern in the end of this piece at the end, which is gonna match the D-shaped pattern just at the end of this pipe. So when it's in, it will look like that. We're then going to be bringing over this small detail here and in a very similar way I'm just going to put some glue into the holes just at the top here which means this pipe can then go into those holes so that should look just like that now on the gear end of the engine here you see we've got two little holes I've got some glue in here, one and two. And the piece we've just made, which has got some lugs on the back, are just going to go into those holes. And it is sort of tilted on there, as you can see. 
Now with the gear side on my left, we've got these pipes here to put in. These are just gonna go into this section just here. We've got some large holes. We wanna make sure the shorter end of the pipe is towards the gear section here. So again, put some glue just in here and in the other side. Give you a breakdown at the moment. Half an hour has passed now since I uh, started this stage. So it does take a while. <laughs> and there we go, that's that pipe in. We then have this larger pipe with the curved end here. This is the side we're actually working on at the moment. So it might be best just to keep that sort of down. If I can uh, use a box, I guess, just to make that up like that. That's perfect, excellent. So this pipe is going to be going into the holes just underneath that pipe there. So again, I've got to put some glue in here. There's four little holes for this. And there you go. That's in there, just holding it in place. We then have this bent pipe looking like that, which are going to go into the holes just on the top of these low pressure pipes here. So again, a bit of glue in here. And I'm just holding that into position. So now that, look at that, looking good. Now the detail we put in the very first time, we do have a little D-shaped hole on here. It's going to take this little shaft here. I need to make sure it's round the right way because we're going to be putting a wheel on this side. If it's round the wrong way, this wheel is going to be facing inwards, which we don't want. So now I know that's okay. I'm going to put some glue in here and put the wheel on. Basically, the flat side when you're doing it should be facing away from you because then once we've done that, at the front of this section where we put that first detail in, a little bit of glue. and drop that into place, making sure it's perfectly square. That looks good. Now on this same side with that, we have got another pipe to put in there. It looks like this, and it's gonna be going into the yellow holes that we can see just on this engine here. So again, some glue in here. Three holes this time, one, two, and three. And get the blunt end in first. There we go. And then put the rest in. Holding that into place. Perfect. My glue dries quite quickly. But that's what that looks like. The next pipe looks just like this. It's going to go in the bottom there. And then the top is just going to go into the hole. that We can just see on that cylinder there. So again, glue this in. Do make sure you do get that in the right hole. There is a hole at the front here. You want to leave that open. Another big pipe to put in there, which is just going to go into these two large holes that we've got on this side. So again, some glue in there. You can see I don't go heavy on the glue at all, just enough to hold it in. That one takes some pushing to get in, but there we go. That's in like that. You do want to make sure if I show you from the top that it is level with the cylinders. Yet another pipe to go in looking like that. That's just going to go on this way here. And as you can see, we do have some lugs just at the bottom there to put this in. So theoretically, I'm actually just putting this in with three lugs. Which has left one end open there. And the last thing I do is I've got this cut, the couple more details here, a pipe and a network connector here. Put a bit of glue just in the hole, in this section just there. Touch more. After almost 40 minutes, it's drying up for me. <laughs> and this is gonna go in here like this. It might be better actually to, before attaching that piece, is to actually put the bracket in the connector first. So that's going in this hole just here. And I'll get that in. 
There we go, that's in. Which means when I put this connector in, it's going to be going in the correct way. So it looks like that. It's going around the side. But that is all there is to do in that stage. You certainly get your money's worth with this. So that was one stage which took 40 minutes. Uh, we're on stage 34 now. This is the magazine for number 34. Again, just giving you a quick flick through and look at all the details we've got for this one. So we're going to be making all of these details together and then putting this onto the base like we did the last time. So this was the first one we did here. We're going to be creating that again on the second one. So by the end of it, a couple more bits with uh, some of the walkways here to put on. It's going to look just like that. So again, 34, the number there, get these open. I mean, look, check all of those tiny details out there. Let me move that to one side because the first things we need are just this section here. And if I get my tweezers out, this tiny section like this. Now this is just going to be going into the two holes that we can just see at the top there. So let's get that in now. It is important to have this in the right direction. So I'll get this in. So it should look like that compared to the shape of the holes there. Now these are pumps, so I've got these pump details here. This is the first one. They're going to follow the keyhole pattern. So this one's going to be going into this point just here, but we're not actually gluing this in. We're going to be screwing it in. Now this is screwed in with EP screws. So I've got them here. This will be the first time I've used my screwdriver on this build or this pack, should I say. I've used it before on the build. So get this in and I will screw this from the other side. Again, letting the screw bite the plastic there that way i know it's going in straight could do the same on the other pump here and again it's easy to orientate it because you're just matching up the keyhole pattern with the cavity that's going in and again an ep screw we could put that to one side because we're going to be making some pipes again now well, basically we need these two sections here and again a little bit of glue just on the end of this pipe here. Because this is going to be going onto this piece. I do think it has got a direction, so it needs to be on just like that. And then I've got another two pipes to go together, which look like this. I'll get this glued in. So that looks just like that. So bringing what we created here back over We've got this pipe here, which is going to go into the larger of these pumps. So a bit of glue at the top. It has got a little D-shaped hole. We can get this in. Make sure that's straight. That looks good. And then on the other side, again, just some glue just in the top here. So that should look just like that. So we can bring over this platform now. And this is going to be going into this center section here with the pipe here going into this hole just there. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue just in that hole. So I can line this up. Get my tweezers to help me. to Make sure it goes in. So we're good on that side. There's another hole on the other side for the other pipe. Again, I'm going to put a tiny bit of glue in there. And I'll get that one in as well. There we go. That's in. Now we are going to be holding the whole thing in with an EP screw from the other side. So I've got that here. Turn it over and just get that in. Now the next detail we want looks like this. It's got like a little dial in the middle of it quite long that's just going to go in front of what we've just created there there is a tiny hole here it is a d-shaped hole so i'm going to make sure i put this in the right way let's get this in so that looks just like that we could put that to one side because we're going to be creating some more of the thrust blocks now so quite simply, we're just going to take these two parts and these are going to be going together 
like that. So let's glue these together. Just had to uh, replenish my glue there. It's been so long it all dried up. <laughs> let's put this together. And just hold that for a second. So as you can see, that's now one piece. Okay, we've got a couple of pipes that we actually need to put together now. So you just need to make sure you put the right one <laughs> in the right hole, which is uh, not as easy as it sounds. So this one here is going to go in here. So we want it to go in the same direction that the end is pointing in here. So it's probably once again best if I put one in. And show you what this looks like. There we go. Let's make the other one. And now it's a case of just putting these into place. So this is going to go into the hole on the top there. And then the bottom section we had is going to go into the hole there. So we get some uh, glue onto these. It's all detail this pack. All detail. The hole we're putting it into the base there is not the D-shaped hole. It's the hole next to it. Just there. There we go. That's one side on. Do the same on the other side. And there we go. That's the other side in. Looking good. Bring over this section again. And it's going to be going in this way. Just like that. So it's sitting next to it with the open end pipes going this way. Once again held in with EP screws. Just need two of them this time. That's one. And two. Now there's a little D-shaped hole just at the side here. Which I'm putting some glue in. For a tiny, tiny, tiny detail. I'm going to try and show you this. That looks just like that. That's just going to go into that facing down. So when it's in, it looks like that. Very clever. In front of that whole section, we've got the lubrication pump. That's going into the keyhole pattern that we can just see in front of this. Get that in. Just like that. That one's held in from the underside of an FP screw. That's these ones here. And just like we had done on the other side here, we've got this detail here is just going to go into this hole. So again, more glue. Get that in. It is a D-shaped hole. So it can only go in one way like that. I've got this massive lot of pipes here, which is going in front of what we just put in earlier, what we just screwed in there. So let's get that one in. Excellent. It's mirroring pretty much what we've done on the other side, you see. Another detail, just going into the hole just on the other side here, just like this side over this one. Like that, now you can see how it's mirrored. And on this one, I've got a little pressure gauge, which is just going into the top here. Putting some glue in there. It's going into this hole just here, oops, fell out. That's just going into this hole here. It has got a little red red section just on top, so I'm gonna drop that into that hole facing outwards. So again, we can put all of that to one side, lots of detail there. Bring over what we're working on because we're gonna now put the walkways in. This is what the walkway looks like. We have the tops on this section. As you see, they're slots. They're just gonna go into the slots that we can see on the yellow pieces just here. So let's get glue in those. And push this into place. One, two, three, four. Just make sure that steps at the bottom go into the little holes that are at the bottom there. I'll put some glue in there. So they should fit 
flush at the bottom there as well. Now, a bit more glue. In the D-shaped hole that I've got in this indent here, which I'm putting glue in, we've got three pipes to put in. It's D-shaped, as I said, so it can only go in one way. So it's going in this way. Get that in there. Make sure it's sitting flush and straight. Like that. And then the last piece we've got looking just like this, pretty similar. It's not pretty similar, it's exactly similar <laughs> to what we had on the other engine. Let's put some glue into these points just here. And this is just going to go into that point there. Put this in. Make sure that's all the way in there. Perfect. And then the pipe that we had that went round some glue in the top there and now we can put that into the top piece so it's now one continuous pipe all the way around Whew, that's all there is to do in that stage so this is stage 35 here let's just flick through this again see what we're doing have we got lots of details again not as many details this time but wow we're starting to do some of the mechanics here so we've got some gears to put in we're going to create all of this. This is what's going to actually operate the engines, I'm guessing. So by the end, it looks just like that. This looks like it's going to be a great stage. Okay, first thing to do, we want this section of the gear housing here. We need to open the gears up. But before we start putting the gears in, we have got these little rods to go in first. So let's get these open. Four rods to put in. One. Two. They're just going into these holes here and mirrored on the other side here three and four perfect now we've got some gears here we want to make sure that the lips are facing up on them and they're just going to go over the top of what we've just created there with the pins so one two three and four they're all the same size now even though these ones are engaged these ones aren't at the moment. Now, before we start linking everything together, they have gave us a little bit of grease. So I'm gonna just make sure that these are all greased up. We then got these larger gears to put in. So we have them going into these larger holes there. So one in there, one in the top, and one in this side over here. Looking like that once again. Let's uh, grease these up. Now I've got a centre spindle to put in there. It's not connected to anything at the moment. I'm also making sure that I'm putting grease on these cog shafts here. But, uh, it's had a thorough greasing. <laughs> the last thing to do is we've got these two little gear cogs here, which are going into interlock these sections together. So one in there, which is in the oval section. And just one in this side, which is linking these two gears over here together. I'm making sure they're fully engaged, which they are. And this is the final time there, just putting that down gently, that I can give it a good greasing up. Now I may have gone a bit heavy for that. I've used some of my own as well. <laughs> But uh, I want to make sure that's completely greased up exactly as it needs to be. Because I'm about to put the cover on now. This is what the cover looks like. And it wants to engage with everything that we've got here. Oops. Just knocked it then. So let's put this into place. And that's gone in perfect first time there. Quite happy with that. This is going to be held in with CP screws. So I'm very anxious to make sure these are all in first. Let's just get a couple in. Make sure it's tight because you don't want these chattering around inside. There's actually six of these screws to put in altogether. So to test this works, what I'm going to do is we get one of these brass rods to come with it, put it in the middle one, and when I turn it clockwise, these three should turn so hopefully let's try it out there you go as you can see they're all turning <laughs> excellent when i turn it anti-clockwise 
only two turn, very clever. Clockwise, three turn, anti-clockwise, only two turn. But that is all there is to do in that stage. Okay, so this is stage 36. We're gonna be doing the steam turbine in this. So that's looking just like that. Flicking through, showing you what that looks like. Looks like we're mounting the engines here as well, which is gonna be fun. So by the end of it, it's gonna look just like that. So all of these parts you see here are stage 36. Let's just put that to one side. First thing I need is the base here of the turbine. And we need these two sections. And these are just quite simply just gonna go on either side. So one this side here and one this side here so that they fit nice and flush. They're gonna be held in with AP screws. Now, when you put these on, you wanna make sure all the holes at the bottom match up. So let's get these AP screws in to each side. There you go. And when they're on, they should look just like that. Put that to one side, so we're working on the pipes now. So basically the way these pipes go together is we take these two sections. This is actually a D-shaped pattern, so it can only go in one way. Although I'm struggling. There we go, it goes in that way there. <laughs> these are quite a tight fit, actually. But when they're in, they go in like that. They shouldn't need gluing because they're so tight fit. Do the same on the other side here. Again, they can only go in one way. Like that. So the bent section here is going to go towards the outside. So the way these go in, these just push into these holes here and here, just like that. And again, on the other side here, exactly like uh, you see there, one and two, and push that in. Again, up to you if you glue these, these do go in quite tight. So I uh, don't know if I am going to glue them, but there we go. That's what that's looking like. Put that to one side. I'm going to bring over what we worked on previously this section here and in the middle here we have got the thrust block assembly which looks just like this now that's going to be going on these three holes here just like that there held in from the underside with ap screws again turn it over and i'll get all of these in place and that's the third screw just going in here now perfect the last thing to do is we're going to extend this base out by putting this section over the top of this section here like this, slots in, and that's gonna be screwed in again with AP screws. So it is a case, once again, of turning it over, making sure we don't touch anything on the other side. You know how delicate some of those parts are, and screwing this all in. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna put this to one side because now we need to identify the engines. So the easiest way to identify the engine, if you have a pipe like this, with this controller at the front here, pointing towards the gears, that is the port engine. If it's pointing towards the right with this end here, that's the starboard engine. So that's how you can identify the two engines. Now we need to make sure all the bases of the engine are completely flat to this base, which you can see there, mine are completely and utterly flat. But on my port engine, as you can see, I have a gap. And the reason I have a gap is because this metal lip here. So we're about to correct that now. What I want to do, gently handling this piece, is turn it upside down. I need to remove the FM screws. Now, the FM screws are only in these positions. One, two, three, four. So let's get those out. Now, as I get these out, we will be removing the other screws as well. But we just want to keep the FM screws separate. So once you've done that, take them out. I'm just looking which ones mine are in the wrong way. This one, this side, that's in the wrong way. I'm gonna just change that. I'm gonna show you how to do that. I've got my piece in the wrong way. So I am gonna be turning this around. So it should be going in that way with the open section. So when I screw this down now, we won't have that gap. For the instructions to be telling us to do that, either the instructions are wrong, or everyone made a mistake. <laughs> but let's uh, just get this in. So, that is now correct. There's no gap, we just need to put everything back together. There we go, so now we know we've got a port engine and a starboard engine, which are perfectly aligned and flat. Also check the orientation of the flywheel. The larger diameter should be on the outside, smaller one on the inside. Mine were correct, so I don't have to change that.
So the first engine I'm going to be taking is the port engine here. Just lie this down. And we're going to be having it with the gear here going towards this pump and it's going to go in this way here. So I'm just uh, gently lining this up. See now that open end there should be fitting against that thrust block. It shouldn't be inside, just against it there. It's uh, looking good there. That's all lined up. We're going to be holding this engine in with four EM screws. So going to be a bit tricky because we don't want this to fall over. So uh, I'm going to put them in now. Very hard to show you this, but I am starting to put these screws in. And there we go. That's the first engine in. Now what we want to do is take one of the brass rods that we had last time, thread it through this side to make sure it engages with the cog on the other side there. Again, if you're having trouble, just loosen it a bit, the screw underneath, so you have got a little bit of movement in there and get this all the way in. Now the end you're interested in is the shorter end here, not the longer one. It's the shorter one that's going in. So let's get this all the way in here. So just watching that when I turn it, as you can see, hopefully on some camera here, I'm just turning the shaft there so you can see that the engine is turning there. Perfect. And then we can go the other way as well. Excellent. So that one is working an absolute fine. All we're going to do then is do exactly the same with the starboard side. So that one's in place and then in a similar way I'm taking the shorter end of this, not the long end, threading that through, get this into the gear on the other side. Again if you're having problems getting that in, just checking now, just loosen the screw that's holding that in. So with both of those in, both of those turning the engines, no problems at all. All we got to do then is just attach these pipes to the ends here. So a bit more glue. Get this into a hole here. Tweezers out. But that is all there is to do in that stage. What an amazing stage that was. Okay, stage 37. Again, quick flick through. And as you can see here, we now got the motor for the transmission. This is what's gonna be powering these engines. So we're gonna get all of that together now. And what we need to do is we're gonna be actually installing the motor into this top section here. So what we wanna do, because this is a D shape, we need to rotate this round so this can fit absolutely flat in there. So for that reason, I want the flat side to be at 12 o'clock. So I'm just gonna turn this around to get it to 12 o'clock, as you can see in there. And then I will push this into place here. Just like that. Now we've got a cover to put over this, which means I'm gonna to have to untangle this wire now. And I wanna thread this wire through this section here so it comes out the hole at the bottom. Get this all the way through. Now that motor now is engaged in here, so you won't be able to turn any of these now because it's engaged in the motor. So that's gonna be held in with AP screws. And then in a similar way to what we've just done, I'm gonna make this wire nice and straight just by doing that. All we're gonna do then is take the base. We wanna thread this through the outside to the inside of the base like that. Get that all the way through. And then this is going to be going this way round, held in with AP screws. Perfect, so that's the base in. I then want to take the short brass shaft here. I'm just looking at either side. We've got one with a D-shaped side, the other one's blank. It's the D-shaped one that we want to put in the motor there. And make sure it's fully engaged. So I'll push that all the way in. And that is all there is to do in that stage. So in the last stage, stage 38, 
we're gonna check the engines now. So these are the parts that we've got here. Looks like we've got a USB adapter so we can power this through the board here. I'm gonna check that these work when I plug it in. We're gonna be mounting this into these shafts so that when it starts, hopefully it's gonna work and go round. Let's see how this works. <laughs> Yeah, it's very lucky that I do this next to a computer here because what I want to do first is just check that all of those uh, motor shafts in here are actually still going around. So let's plug this in. I'm going to put the center switch into stop position. So there you go, that's plugged into there. Plug the motor in, which is just going into this port here. And then when I put this switch, I want to check that they're turning, as you can see, they're turning there. So what we want to do then, once we've confirmed all this is still working, is just push this into the hole here. So we have that coming out the other way. Oops, put it in that way, excellent. And tight into this section because we're now going to be putting these two shafts into position here. So one this side and one this side here. And there we go, they're both engaged into that section. We've got some AP screws to put that in with. So four of them, let's get them in. That will keep that nice and tightly down. Perfect. And now if everything's been done right, when I operate this, <laughs> so nervous, the engine should turn. So I'm making sure it's in the stationary position let's get this so you can see it probably on the side camera plug it in let's see what happens when i turn this wow look at that they're working <laughs> i'm so happy i'm so happy that's brilliant absolutely brilliant now the last thing to show you when this is going around is make sure that this one is turning as well as you can see there that means they're all working absolute perfect. That's all there is to do in that stage. That's all there is to do in that pack. Do you know how rare it is for things to be actually working first time for me? But that does not look good, does it? So happy with that. Once again, if you are in a territory that has got this for Agora Models, then check out the agoramodels.com website. You can get this all the way from pack one. But I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, Take care.